So hello and welcome back to my channel. It has been a while since I've been able to film. As I mentioned in a couple of previous videos, um, work got really busy. So I was working a lot more than usual. We were out of town for a couple of weeks. We were in New York and Boston for a couple of weeks and we dropped our son off at college. So it's just been a very busy end of the summer. Things seem to have settled down though. So I am really happy to be here today with you all. And what I'm gonna be talking about today are products and items that I use all the time, just on the regular, but for whatever reason, I have not mentioned them yet here on my channel. So all of these are huge favorites of mine, but like I said, I've never mentioned them and I feel like I need to give them their due. So here we are today to do that. The first product I'm going to talk about is actually a facial tool. This is the Pure Botanicals facial roller. It's an ice roller. It kind of has some frost on it. So I just got this out of the freezer. So it is nice and cold. And uh, this was a recommendation from Nikki Evans. If you don't follow her on Instagram, she is wonderful. So I'll put her handle down here below. Highly recommend you go and follow her. Uh, but anyway, she recommended this, I don't know, maybe it was three or four years ago. And I really, really love it. So as you can see, it's nice and chilled. I'm not going to put it all over my face right now because I don't want to smear my makeup, but I use this everywhere. Um, I use it up my neck and all along my face. Where I really like to use it though is my eyes. So I can, even though it's really big, I can get under here and just kind of roll out. And then I get under my brow bone and then just move things up. So it just is really great for depuffing. It feels really good. Uh, when my son had his wisdom teeth pulled recently, he used this along his jawline to relieve pain. I think you could use it anywhere on your body, like if you're having elbow pain or any kind of musculoskeletal issues, it is big enough to use on your body and it's not so large that you can't get into the nooks and crannies of your face. So if you have been looking for an ice roller, I do recommend this one. I did get it off of Amazon. Like I said, this was years ago. I'm really, really trying hard to minimize and just completely avoid Amazon orders. But if I can only find it on Amazon, that is where I will link it. And it is super cheap. I think this thing was like $10. So if you want an ice roller, I don't think you have to spend a whole lot of money to reap the benefits of, you know, the nice cooling, you know, ice therapy basically on your face and body. So staying along the theme of de-puffing the eyes, which as you guys know, if you've ever watched any of my videos, I do talk a lot about puffy eyes. And that is something that I deal with quite often. So I tried the Do uh, Forever Eye Mask. This is the tin that it comes in and do or de is the French word, you know, for two. So these are what they look like. Of course you get two of them. And the deal with these is they are reusable. So it's a very sustainable way to use an eye mask. So as you've heard me talk about before, I really love the 100% pure eye masks, but it's a lot of packaging. It's a lot of waste. I do still use them every once in a while, not that often. I typically will use it, you know, in the morning if I have really puffy eyes and I need to go to work, I'll just slap those on because it's so easy, but I have moved to using these quite frequently, probably a couple times a week, I would say. But the one thing I don't like about these, and this is why I've been reluctant to talk about it, is you're not going to be able to see this but it is kind of stiff. It looks very flexible, but for whatever reason, it is a little bit on the stiff side. So what you do is you put your serum, I don't know, I guess you could put it already on your skin, you know, on your under eyes. But what I do is I usually put a liquidy serum or like a gel serum on the actual eye mask and then I apply it to my face. And I just find that it's just very stiff. They don't feel very comfortable. I just, I don't really love it, but it actually does the job. So it's a great way of kind of like increasing the delivery system, if you will, in terms of using a very liquidy or gel type of uh, eye product. So I really like these with the Kahina eye serum. They work really well with the Fine serums that were featured uh, by the Boxwalla. Um, I'm trying to think what else I've used it with. Oh yeah, it's really nice with the Good Molecules. I think it's their Yerba Mate serum or it's sort of like a gel serum. I really, really like that one a lot and that works really well with these because it's a little more tacky. So I think you kind of have to fiddle with the actual product you're going to be using you know, with your um, reusable mask. Again, 
I don't totally love them, but I do use them because they work. They're just not super comfortable and I feel like I have to constantly be pressing on them to make sure that they're really sticking to my face. So ultimately I do recommend these. I think they have maybe um, tinkered with the texture a little bit. So I, I think I got an email that said they are now a little bit softer, but I can't speak to that because I haven't used uh, the newer version of the Do eye masks. But in the end, I would say overall that I do recommend these because obviously Obviously, it's a very, very sustainable option for eye masks. So next up, I'm going to talk about azelaic acid and the products that I use that have azelaic acid. Now, I have mentioned azelaic acid quite a bit on my channel. I think it is a wonderful product for so many things. It is great for rosacea, red irritated skin. It's very calming, but it's also really good for acne and blemish breakouts that you might be getting. And it's also really good for hyperpigmentation. I don't have a particular like over-the-counter product that I absolutely love that contains azelaic acid, I actually use prescription strength azelaic acid. So I'm going to show you the ones that I have. This one is called Azelex and it is crazy, crazy expensive. It is 20% azelaic acid. So I think this is the highest percentage that you can get in any kind of a product or prescription strength. This is a great one. I've been using this for years and years and years, probably 15 years or so, and the price just keeps going up and up and up, which is really, really annoying. Um, I also do have the 15% azelaic acid. This is also prescription strength as well. This too can be very expensive. So of course you're going to want to check in with your dermatologist before you're using a prescription strength. Uh, maybe your insurance will do a better job of covering um, this product than mine does, but very, very expensive. So what I have as an alternative is I actually got this. It's called As Clear Action and I will link this below. This actually comes from a New Zealand e-tailer. And this has 20% azelaic acid. It's 25 grams, and I believe it was around $25, definitely under $30, and that actually included shipping. So this is an incredible bargain. Uh, CJ was the one who tipped me off on this, and it took maybe a week, maybe 10 days to uh, receive this, but definitely worth the wait because $25 is way more tolerable than what these are. I think for my insurance, my, uh, you know, after the percentage that they pay or whatever, it's still like two or $300 to get these. It was not always that expensive. I did not pay $200 to get this. I think we got this once we had met our deductible. Um, but I think now, no matter what, even if we meet our deductible, it's still incredibly expensive. So anyway, I had to find an alternative uh, because I do not ever want to be uh, without azelaic acid. So I thought I would give this one a try, the one that's really cheap uh, from New Zealand. And I do recommend it. It's got a great texture. It's very creamy. It soaks in very easily. I can use this before I apply my skincare, you know, like a serum or my moisturizer, I can actually put it on top of that. It doesn't disrupt makeup. It's pretty amazing. So I really do like this formula. Um, I can't talk about, you know, all the ingredients in here, but the way I use it, just kind of like spot treatment, sometimes on my upper lip, I am really not concerned about um, those types of ingredients being in here. And then I'm going to talk about a product that I just, I can't believe I've never mentioned this before. I'm almost 100% sure I've never mentioned this. This is the Laneige Sleeping Mask mask. I don't know if you can tell, but it is empty. <laughs> so I'm about to put this in my empties bag and yeah, you can see it is just pretty much bone dry, except for there's just like a little bit left in the middle there. So I probably have, uh, I don't know, maybe two more uses of this. I think this is one of the best overnight. I don't, I, I think the sleeping mask is a little bit of a gimmick, but it's basically a nighttime lip balm. It feels great. It lasts all through the night. I never have to reapply this in the middle of the night. Like if I use something else, I might wake up in the middle of the night to use the bathroom and then I feel like I need to reapply. But with this, I don't, it lasts. Uh, I got the, um, what is this? The vanilla and I do really like the vanilla. It's not super cloying. It might be a little bit too sweet for those of you who don't like scented lip products. 
or if you just don't like the scent of vanilla. You just have to check out the different, you know, scents that they have. I wish they made an unscented one. I feel like that would be ideal. But anyway, I will definitely be getting this again. I love it and it works really well for me. So now I'm gonna move on to some body care stuff. This is my dry brush. I don't even know what brand this is. I'm gonna have to do some research. I got this from the Clean Beauty Box when they were the Art of Organics. So it's been a while. I don't use this every single day, probably just a couple times a week, and I'm not an expert dry brusher, but what I tend to do is I just start from my feet and then I move up on my legs, and then I go up my torso, always moving towards my heart, and then my arms, again, moving towards my heart, and then as best I can, I do my back, and then I just start at my shoulders and then go down towards my heart, and then my uh, lower back moving up again towards my heart. Um, I really like the effect of this it just feels very invigorating i can't say that i notice you know any major difference in my skin and you know the texture of my skin it just feels really good it wakes me up in the morning i do like to use this before i um, shower in the morning before i'm going to go to work just like it because like i said it's invigorating and just kind of helps wake me up so this is something that i use regularly i've been using it regularly for years and i will try to find the brand i'll try to remember what this was because it was was not that expensive. I think this was around $10, $15. Now this is a product that I have had for a couple of years. I'm almost done with it. This is the Walita Wild Rose Deodorant. And if you followed me at all, you know that my holy grail deodorant is actually the Dr. Hauschka Rose Deodorant. But I do like to switch it up every once in a while, maybe like once a week or so, I like to use a different deodorant. And so this one has been serving that purpose for me. I really love the scent of it. It is that beautiful rosy, herbal type of scent. I do like that it's a spray, but the one thing I will say about this bottle is it's kind of cumbersome to use. So when I have it in my right hand and I spray under my arms, it works just fine, but there's something, I don't know what it is, something about my left hand and getting it under my armpit. I don't know, it just doesn't work as well. And a lot of times I'm reaching for my deodorant um, after I have applied my oil lotion combination. So then my hands get kind of slippery. So I just find it a little bit difficult to use. I just wish it maybe was in a smaller bottle. I don't know, just something that's a little bit more uh, ergonomically friendly. As far as its efficacy, it works really well. I really do like it. I like using this at nighttime, like if I feel like I need a little bit of deodorant before I go to bed. I love the smell and I do think it works really well. So this is a recommendation. I know they have one, I think that's sage that's pretty popular. But anyway, I like the rose, the wild rose scent, and I do recommend it. I just wish the bottle wasn't quite so cumbersome. So next up, I'm gonna talk about some makeup items these are things that I use very frequently, but I don't think I've ever mentioned them. I'm going to start off with the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Palette. It's a little beat up. I didn't clean it off before filming here, but it shows you that I do use this quite a bit and I do really like it a lot. This is what the palette looks like inside. And you can just see it's just a really pretty pinky, beigey, leaning, warm to neutral type of palette. It's just a very versatile palette and I typically like to use this on work days. I do actually have it on my eyes right now. I do feel like it's very flattering uh, for filming. So I like it for filming and I also like it for work and just kind of an everyday look. But I do find that this palette is really easy to use. The powders are very, the eyeshadow powders are very creamy, very blendable, very forgiving, which is everything that I need in an eyeshadow. So I do recommend this palette if you've been you know, on the fence about getting it or not, I do think it is a worthwhile one to have. So another makeup product that I have really been enjoying that I haven't spoken about yet is the Kosas Setting Powder. And I have the color Comfy. And let me show you what that looks like. It might be getting a little bit washed out from the sunlight coming in. But for me, um, and I have light to medium olive skin tone, this is a perfect match for me. And after I have applied my SPF, which usually does have some kind of tint in it or foundation over top um, SPF, 
I will have a dewy look, which is what I prefer, but I don't necessarily love that dewy look right under my eyes. So I just take this fluffy brush and then I just put it right under my eyes and it just blends in seamlessly and it does exactly what I want it to do, which is kind of taking down the overly shiny dewy look while not disrupting the dewy look that I have going on the rest of my face. I don't know what is going on with this particular formula, but it just really, really works in terms of allowing Allowing that natural skin finish to shine through. It doesn't get like overly powdery or chalky or anything. It just works really well in taking down a little bit of that shine while not disrupting the overall dewy look that you want to achieve on the rest of your face. I think it's also beautiful to use over your entire face if you like to have a setting powder over your entire face. But like I said, for me, I just typically use it under my eyes and that has been working really, really well. Now, speaking of eyes, I do have some Dr. Hauschka eyeliners to talk to you about. I actually have four of them. These two I've had for years. I don't even know. It might be going on six years. You can see they're pretty small. I don't go through eyeliner super fast, uh, which is kind of crazy because I use eyeliner pretty much every single day, no matter what. I've had these for several years, but the reason why I haven't mentioned them yet is because these two are actually limited edition. You cannot get them. So I hate talking about something that I love, which is limited edition and you can't get anymore. I think this one is khaki and I think this one is kind of a gray color. I can't remember the names. And again, I'm not even going to talk about them too much because you can't get them anymore, but these are just such wonderful eyeliners. So I decided to go ahead and try the new ones that are available now that I think are a part of the Dr. Hushka permanent line. So you can see that these are newer, not as used, um, but I do love them a lot. So I got the black, which is on the top here, and then I also got their navy blue. These work really well for me. Um, they don't smudge. I do actually have the black on my waterline today, so I have a combination. My eye look today is a combination of the Charlotte Tilbury palette, the um, Pillow Talk palette, and then I do have the Dr. Hauschka. Let's see, what are these called anyway? I think, oh, it's the Eye Definer. I think these were their coal eyeliners, and now they're calling them their Eye Definer. So anyway, I have this on the waterline. I really love both of these. I think they're wonderful eyeliners. They're very creamy. Um, they blend really easily. So for instance, I can use the black right above my upper lash line and then just kind of smudge it out and it gives a really nice smoky eye. It might not be as long lasting as some of you might like, but for me, it does the job. I don't mind reapplying eyeliner, especially on my waterline. I'm going to assume that I'm going to need to do that uh, sort of like midday or if I'm going to be going out somewhere in the evening, I will reapply. But I do really like these eyeliners. I think that the uh, Dr. Dr. Hauschka line is kind of hit or miss both in skincare and as well in makeup. But for me, I really love the eyeliners. Obviously I'm talking about them here today. And I also really like the lengthening Dr. Hauschka mascara. So those are my two recommendations from Dr. Hauschka. I have spoken about the mascara before in the past, but like I said, I'd never mentioned the eyeliners. So I definitely wanted to give them a shout out here today. So now we're going to move on to the quote unquote lifestyle section. This is just sort of like a mishmash of various things that I love to use either for cooking or just around the house. So the first thing I want to mention is the Papier d'Armini. These are scented burning papers. So it's a really nice alternative to incense. I don't know if you guys have ever seen these before, but they're little paper books. And then you just take out the strip that you want to use, you know, to burn. I'll show you how I do it. So I'm not actually gonna light it right now, but you just take out one of the papers and then I got this uh, little ceramic holder. I think I got this from Beauty Habit, but it is made by the Papier d'Armini people and then they've got a little slot in here and then you just stick it in the little slot and then you burn it. And these things burn in like under a minute, I'm pretty sure. So I prefer it to incense overall, just kind of like on a daily basis because sometimes incense gets a little bit too overwhelming for me. And this is just a little bit on the lighter side, burns really fast. And so I just, I really love it. I kind of love the little ritual of burning the paper. It's just kind of satisfying to me. If you've never checked out these burning papers, I do really recommend them. And I will definitely link to those below. So next up is my loose leaf tea maker. I have had this thing for about 20 years. I think I got it in New York and the company is Bonjour, that's the brand. I don't know if they still make this or not. 
I do really love this thing. It's pretty obvious how you use it. You just put your loose leaf tea in here, you add the boiling water. And then what this does is it acts as a strainer. I know it kind of looks like a French press, but it's not, this thing does not get pushed down. And then you pour it out. And then of course the loose leaf tea stays in here and then you get your tea in your cup. Now I do really love this thing, but the one thing I would say is if you've made a pretty good amount of tea, then it can be a little bit hard for this thing to strain. So you kind of have to like pull it off a little bit. I think maybe a vacuum or something gets created in here. So I kind of have to loosen it up and then pour it out. So it is a little bit of a pain. Um, I do really love it. It is one of my favorite things that I use all the time, mostly because I love drinking tea. But if you have any suggestions about an alternative for your loose leaf tea, please do let me know down below. I was in Muji the other day and they had a really beautiful glass pot that has like the silicone strainer in the core in the center of the pot. So it's kind of like all one piece, but it was kind of on the small side. It looked like maybe it would only fill up a cup of tea for one person. And I want to be able to make tea for at least two people. So if you all have any suggestions for a loose leaf tea maker uh, that you think is very functional and would be good for, you know, maybe serving at least two or three cups of tea, I am all ears. Please do let me know down below. And speaking of Muji, I wanted to show you two of my favorite cooking tools, utensils that are from Muji. This is their, I believe this is their stainless steel uh, spatula. I mean, I know it's obviously a spatula, but I do believe it's made of stainless steel. This is my favorite, favorite spatula. I don't know what it is about it, but it's thin, so it makes it really easy to kind of like get under food. It's not too bulky, so it just makes the food kind of slide onto the spatula really easily. It, there's just something about it. It's very, um, very user friendly. It's very ergonomical. So I love this spatula. So if you've been eyeing this spatula at Muji, I do recommend it. And then I had been eyeing their silicone uh, serving spoon for a long time. This is great. I'm so glad I finally got it. It's really great for rice. It's great for sauces. Um, it's not going to scrape your nonstick pans if you do have those. And it just feels nice and weighty in the hand. There's just something very satisfying about it. So I do recommend this a lot. I think that this would be a great um, housewarming gift, a great hostess gift, host gift. Uh, I think that anything from Muji, especially in the kitchen section, you just can't go wrong. Now, speaking of silicone and not wanting to scrape up your pan, last but not least, I have the, what is this? The R place. I think the brand is R place and it's the all pan. I don't know. I can never remember the name of this thing, but anyway, I broke down and I got this last year during their sale. I think they had a black Friday sale. This normally retails for $145. I think I got it for $95. I don't think I would pay $145, but for 95, I really, really like this thing. So let me tell you what I don't like about it. I do think this wooden utensil is very nice and you'll see it has a hole right here and that is so you can place it on this little notch so that you don't have to, you know, put your utensil down on your counter. You can just kind of leave it there. I personally have never used that. I know I don't know why. I find it to be a little bit cumbersome. It seems kind of gimmicky. I don't use that feature at all. The other thing that I don't use is the uh, the steamer. So it comes with a steamer. For those of you who like to wilt your greens, um, you know, by steaming, I think this would be a great thing to have. I just never use it. I don't find that I do a lot of steaming. And then this is what the inside of the pan looks like. It is a non-stick pan. It's not technically ceramic. I was just watching a video about what this surface is, but I, I can't remember the name of it, but I think it's made from silica. So it's a sand based material and it does scrape very easily. So even though I do love this utensil, the metal utensil from Muji, um, the spatula, I am not going to use that on here because I can already see that it has a couple of little nicks in it. And I just, that really bums me out. So I keep telling my family members, do not use metal on this. So having said that, that is when the silicone spoon comes in very handy with a pan like this because it's not going to scrape it up. So I really love this thing. I think it's very easy to use. It's great for eggs 
eggs. It's great for, you know, sauteing veggies and making, you know, stir fries. And I don't know, I've just used this for everything. And this thing basically lives on my stovetop because I just use it all the time. So it's kind of a pain for me to put it away and then have to take it out. I probably use it three times a day, you know, for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. At some point, I'm usually heating something up. I do really like the lid. I like that it has a little bit more, I think it's called headspace, you know, for the cooking process. It has this little opening here so that when you close it like this, and if you don't want things to get too steamed, then the steam comes out of this little pocket that they have. The main thing I don't like about this is this handle right here is not coated with anything that allows you to hold it when it is hot. So you need to have a hot pad in order to hold this thing when it's hot. And I've, I've not burned myself severely, but at times when I've forgotten that, I've just, it's, it's very unpleasant. <laughs> so you need to be very, very careful with this handle. This of course, is heat resistant. So you can hold on to this obviously while it's really hot, uh, but this one you cannot. So you need to be really careful. And then I don't know if you can see here, this right here, kind of the V that connects to the pan. This is also the same material as this. So the other thing you have to be careful of is not to grab it too close to this or you will burn yourself as well. So I just realized I forgot something that I definitely want to talk about. And this is the Josh Rosebrook brush. This is a relatively new launch from him. I can't remember when he launched this. Maybe it was four or five months ago. But anyway, this is such a beautiful brush. First off, it smells really good. I don't know what the material is of these bristles or this particular wood, but it has this really beautiful vanilla kind of balsam scent that is just really relaxing. And then the bristles just feel really soft and gentle on your hair, kind of gives you like a nice little scalp massage. But I just think this is a beautiful brush. I love how gentle it is. And I don't brush my hair a lot, especially when I've let my hair air dry and it's on the curly side. I typically don't brush my hair at all until I've washed it again. So the only time I'm really brushing my hair is if I do have it straightened, which I did flat iron my hair today. So when my hair is straighter, I will brush it just to kind of smooth it out, obviously. But typically when my hair is in its curly state, the only time I brush it is before I'm going to get in the shower. So I've been loving using this as my pre shower ritual before I'm going to wash my hair because it just, it smells smells good. I just don't know what it is about this brush, but it smells beautiful. It feels really just soft and gentle on your hair and scalp. But anyway, I really love it. I think it's a lovely brush. I think this too would be a wonderful gift if you have anybody in your life that you want to treat them to something special or you want to treat yourself to something special. Highly recommend this brush. So that does it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed me talking about these products and, you know, items that I use pretty much on a daily basis, but like I said, had never quite gotten around to talking about them on my channel. If you have any questions, please do let me know down below. If you have any suggestions for videos that you would like to see, I'm definitely all ears for input on that, but thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks for bearing with me while I was on my break and I'm hoping to get back on a regular filming schedule again, hopefully once a week, uh, no promises, but that is my goal. But thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.